Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. So today I'm going to be talking about something that I've never spoken about on my channel before, but I thought this might be helpful and a lot of you may be able to relate to this video. So I'm basically going to be talking about my eczema and kind of like my journey and what has helped and if I have found somewhat of a cure. That's a, that's a strong word to use, but um, if I have found what helps to, you know, relieve my eczema and things like that, and I do know that a lot of, well not a lot, but some of you guys do have eczema because when I do skincare videos, a lot of you tell me, so if you have anything to add to what I'm saying, please, please, please comment that down below because I am still trying to figure out, you know, what, what works best for me. Um, but before I get into this video, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it. And I'm so thankful for all of you who have been subscribing and commenting and leaving sweet comments. And I really do appreciate it. But I'm just going to get straight into this video because I haven't planned it. And I'm basically just going to be speaking from the top of my head. And when that happens, I tend to just ramble. So hopefully this video isn't too long. And hopefully someone out there, whoever's watching this, you that's watching this can find this helpful. So let's get started. My eczema started when I was, I think, around two or three. I don't actually remember back then because I was obviously so young. But from what I've heard from like my family and things, it was pretty bad. I had it typically where most people have it, or I guess most children have it, I don't know. But like at the backs of my knees, kind of here, and um, where else do I have it? I think those were the main places, like on my legs and my arms. Um, thankfully, right now, I don't, um, I don't really have it in any of those places other than my neck, which I will talk about in a sec. So I had um, a bunch of creams, um, like most people do have their prescribed creams from their doctor. So I was on a steroid cream called Fusibet, I think. That's how it's pronounced. That's how I've always pronounced it. Fusibet. And I also was on Aqueous cream. Um, and I used to wash with the Aqueous cream as well and also use it as a moisturiser. And then the Fusibet, like I said, was a steroid cream, which I would put on the kind of um, inflamed parts of my skin. Um, Fast forward <laughs> until now, I'm not on that steroid cream anymore and I don't use Acres cream because I don't like it at all. Um, but it was pretty bad to the point where sometimes it, will, it would bleed and things like that. Just very uncomfortable, which is not the nicest to look at either. And um, it just it just wasn't nice at all. But right now I actually currently use um, Double Base, which is kind of a gel cream and I really really do like it that's probably the only prescribed cream that I actually do like and along with that to shower I don't use Aqueous cream because I don't really like it when I was younger it was great because I was young I didn't really know what I was doing but I feel like as I'm getting older it doesn't lather as much as I want it to and it doesn't smell like anything and when you have a shower you want to smell good so what I have found works for me is Sanex and they have different ones for different skin types so I typically use the hypoallergenic one with like zero percent I can't remember what it's called but I will have it in this video somewhere I think it's called zero percent something and it has like no colorants no perfumes no any no nothing and then I use the other one for very sensitive skin I have tried the one that was for dry skin and that one didn't really work for my skin I felt like my skin was kind of reacting to it but those two particular ones that I am um, currently use they do work really well for my skin and I don't kind of react to them but it just depends how bad your eczema is right now it isn't bad. Like I said, I don't have it on my legs. I don't have it on my arms. I do have it on my neck. You probably can't even see it. Um, but it isn't too bad. It's not really dry and crusty. It's more kind of sore. Um, and it is because I have been using steroid creams for so long. It kind of changed the color of my skin, not all of my skin, but just the affected areas. So I don't know if you guys can see, but it's, um, it can get, when I have dark patches, it's basically where I was using the steroid cream. And they say you're not supposed to use too much of it. I don't think I did. I was using it accordingly, like how you're supposed to use it. But my eczema was so bad at the time that 
I constantly had to apply it because it was inflamed, it was itchy and it was slightly raised. Um, and also with steroid creams, I believe, correct me if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they kind of thin the skin down and which is why they say you have to be cautious and you can only get it on prescription. But one thing um, that I would say and as a tip for those of you who suffer from eczema or any kind of itchy, dry, chapped, inflamed skin, um, I feel like a lot of mine is probably diet related. Um, I've known that for a while, maybe like for this past year, I've always known that it's probably to do with my diet and things like that because certain foods can trigger, you know, the oncoming of your eczema. And for me, when I went on Pinterest and just did my research and kind of was trying to make myself aware of what was what I was intaking, I find that, um, and a lot of places do say that you should go vegan and I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I'm a vegan. Um, if I tell you what I don't eat, you would classify me as a vegan, but I don't want to call myself that because I just feel like, I'm not quite there yet and it is very, very difficult. Like for someone who loved meat, who loved chicken, who loved everything that was an animal product, it's very difficult to just cut that out of your life essentially. Um, so a lot of people like um, Dr. Sebi, who has like a ton of books and lectures, um, just really kind of, well, he doesn't really specify on um, eczema, but he does specify um, and talks about diseases and um, cancers and the reason why we have all these diseases and um, around the world. And I don't wanna get too deep into it because that's not where this video is going. But basically what I'm trying to say is that I have cut out dairy. For me, dairy is um, somewhat easy to cut out, but dairy such as like cheese, milk, you know, your classic dairy. What I am finding difficult is that a lot of products have some form of dairy in it. They have like some form of powdered milk or lactose or something that is dairy and it's extremely difficult. And any time I go shopping and I read the back, um, it always contains milk and it's like, what am I supposed to eat? <laughs> and for someone that's a picky eater, it's very difficult um, at times. And so that has been quite challenging for me. Cutting stuff out like milk, I never really liked milk anyway, but cheese and things like that, they were easy to do. But when it comes to eating, let's, let's say certain foods and they have, you know, dairy in it, it is, you know, quite difficult. I have been doing well, but sometimes I will buy a product and not realizing that it's got dairy in it. It's got milk or prob most probably it's always milk. Um, not knowing that it's got milk in it. And then when I get home, I realize, oh, it's got milk and I'm not gonna throw it away because that's my money. <laughs> but um, I have been doing quite well and I've also cut out meats as well because that is also a trigger um, for eczema. I I'm, I'm, don't wanna generalize and say, oh, because you're eating meat and dairy and animal products, that's the reason why your eczema hasn't gone. But I'm saying for me personally and from doing my research, and I feel like my research has gone kind of beyond my eczema, it's more, um, like when I actually watch documentaries and realize what I was intaking, I was like, oh, especially dairy. Oh my goodness. I watched this video on um, YouTube. Um, I will leave it in the description box down below if you're interested in watching it. It's quite long, probably like an hour and a half, but he basically was talking about veganism and, um, he kind of put it into perspective about what we eat. And I was like, oh, I am not eating eggs milk or any form of dairy so basically i'm kind of ranting now but um yeah so i have essentially kind of cut out those things eggs and dairy and meat and i'm still trying to figure out what works for me and things like that um, but essentially it's just eating well in order to you know maintain the good skin that i do have a lot of people will say that i don't even have eczema anymore because it's pretty much gone but I would suggest being consistent in your um, regime, in what you use, and also be careful with the steroid creams because like I said, you will get, especially if you're darker skinned, you will get, you know, some discoloration and your skin starts to thin down um, as well. Just washing regularly and making sure that um, you use, I personally use like non-bio detergents and things like that because when I use bio, my skin starts to get super itch itchy. So. I'm kind of still trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work, but I definitely have found that, you know, cutting out the animal products has really helped me. Um, 
if you guys know of anything that has helped you and you think might help me please please comment that down below because i am still figuring this all out you know this video is <laughs> i feel like it's all over the place but some i hope somehow somewhere this video is helpful to someone and hopefully you guys can also help me and educate me um on what can help my skin but you know having eczema is not the most pleasant thing sometimes it doesn't look the best it feels itchy it doesn't feel nice it just sucks when you can't use you know certain products on your skin but i'm still trying to figure it out and i think i'm going to end this video here because i'm just going to keep talking and this video will literally be like 20 minutes long and we do not want that but um i hopefully i've covered everything i've wanted to cover i just wanted to basically talk about it and kind of have like an open dialogue i wish you guys can like talk to me right now but you guys can talk to me in the comment section down below so make sure to comment and tell me you know if you know of anyone that has it and you know has found somewhat of a cure for it let me know because i would be really grateful but i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you found it helpful in any kind of way um and i will see you all in my next video bye guys